Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got quite a few things to go over, new events have been announced, we also have some pretty big hints towards every mega Pokemon returning in Pokemon Legends ZA. We have some Generation 10 investor meeting rumours to go over, there's a lot of things to break down and take a look at today. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below, let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video, subscribe if you're brand new, ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, just a quick recap that the Superior 7-star raid is back in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for the final time. Uh, we have Cerebi here tweeting out saying, Cerebi update, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Mighty Superior Terror Raid Battle event has begun its second run, and obviously this time it is also accompanied with Blissey returning in additional raids. So very, very useful to get your candies and, and all that jazz. Uh, it says, runs until the 29th of September at 23.59 UTC. After this, there's only like three starters left. There's Torterra, Feraligator, and also, I believe, Infernape. And after that, who knows what kind of raids they're going to do. A lot of people are hoping they start doing legendary raids. We've already had Mewtwo and stuff like that. Whether they do it, who knows. But either way, make sure to do Superior this weekend if you haven't already got it. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Pokemon Legends ZA and how all of the Mega Evolutions may have been hinted at already to be returning into the game. So this is the original tweet from uh, Matt, who of course is one of the main data miners in the community. And they tweeted this out on the 27th of January, 2022. So they said, in Legends Arceus's personal data, so not Legends ZA, but Legends Arceus personal data, every species has a count value indicating how many alternate forms it has. Species with mega evolutions still consider their mega forms in their count and have entries associated with those forms. So basically, all Mega Evolutions had their kind of Mega form counted for in Pokemon Legends uh, Arceus. These values were stubbed in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and then they were re-added. So they were taken out in Sword and Shield, then they were re-added back in Pokemon Legends Arceus. And then in addition to this, cries for Pokemon with Mega Evolutions do exist in the game's sound data. So that kind of number there would be Mega Garchomp. And I think that's how we discovered that Mega Jinx was supposed to be a thing, because obviously they found and they data mined the, the cry that was going to be for Mega Jinx before it was scrapped. They are not used when using strong or agile style moves. I think it's pretty peculiar that they stubbed these in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but re-added them in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Because why would they do? Why did they take them out of Sword and Shield and then re-add them in Legends Arceus? Because as we know, Mega Evolutions were not present in either of those games. It says, is this uh, indicative of any future DLC? No. Is this indicative of Mega Evolution being in Pokemon Legends Arceus? Also no. Is this purely speculatory for upcoming games? Perhaps. And I'm excited to see what they do in the next games. Now, for me, I feel like the kind of whole system for Pokemon Legends Arceus is going to be reused in Pokemon Legends ZA. I think all the animations, all of the kind of box kind of storage uh, sort of like animations and just kind of um i can't i don't know what you call it, like the icons like the models and stuff in the box they're also going to be reused and i think all the sound files are going to be reused as well so maybe they were re maybe they were put into pokemon legends arceus because legend za was already in the pipeline and they were like well we're going to have mega evolutions in that game we may as well get it already now we have soul silver also talking about this as well saying it was right there in front of our faces this whole time how crazy is it that all of the data for Mega Pokemon was taken out of Sword and Shield's data, but then each Mega Pokemon's data was added back into Pokemon Legends Arceus. And this is every Mega Pokemon as well. This isn't like a select few. Every single Mega Pokemon's data was in Pokemon Legends Arceus, even if the Pokemon themselves wasn't in the game. So like Mewtwo, for example, obviously isn't in Pokemon Legends Arceus, but it's Mega evolution kind of form and cry and everything like that is so granted matt and i both said that this could be for a future game which obviously it looks like it has been intended for that because we now are getting pokemon legends ea though i would have never thought it was a possibility uh, was possibly for a new legends game set in kalos even riddler Q's decks had shot uh, had slots for the mega's data but i forgot about this during generation 9 it would have made a good theory for my uh, for all my we're going back to kalos theories smh so obviously hindsight is 2020 so this obviously doesn't kind of like fully fully confirm it it is a big hint that obviously it was taken out of sword and shield put back in legends arceus they usually have have data for every single Pokemon in every single game but it's just like why did they take it out of Sword and Shield and then put it back into Legends Arceus and now we're getting another Legends game and it's going to have Mega Evolutions in it so I think the fact that all the data was already in Legends Arceus I think they're going to use the same sort of build the same system because I don't see why they would change it like dramatically when it's they don't need to you know Legends Arceus was so 
well received. All they need to do is kind of do that again, but better. So obviously they're going to use all the base stuff. Like the models and everything look really, really good in Legends Arceus. And I hope they continue that into Pokemon Legends EA. Uh, but the fact that, like I say, all the data was put into Legends Arceus. And now we've got a, a game set in Kalos with Mega Evolutions, which is also a Legend style. I think it, it it's a good hint towards all Mega Evolutions returning, in my opinion. I think it's definitely a... Um, I definitely a shout for it 100%. But let me know your thoughts on it. Do you think it's just a, a coincidence that it was taken out of Sword and Shield and re-added in Legends Arceus? Or do you think it is because they are all going to be in Pokemon Legends EA? I think they all will be anyway. Obviously, there's certain legendaries where they're going to have to kind of, I guess, go out of their way to get them in. Like Mewtwo obviously wouldn't make sense to be in a, like a, a game set in the past because the technology to create Mewtwo wouldn't have existed. As well as like Aerodactyl with the Fossil Restoration kind of technology wouldn't exist and then there's also Pokemon as well like Mega Latias, Mega Latios, Mega Rayquaza like are they all also going to be in the game how are they going to be obtainable so there's going to be a lot of kind of questions but who knows hopefully they sort it all out and all Mega Evolutions do return in Pokemon Legends EA but anyway that's that that I wanted to go over uh, moving on we do also have a new event that's also been announced for Pokemon Go Cerebi here tweeting out saying Cerebi update the Pokemon Go Galarian Expedition taken over event has been announced so this runs from the 8th of October through to the 11th of October and it also adds Shadow Heatran into the game so we have just had Shadow Cresselia but now Shadow Heatran is going to be making the rounds and this is all the information you kind of need to know about the event so Team Go Rocket and Giovanni return give it your role and rescue Shadow Heatran during Galarian Expedition takeover so uh, the event bonuses so Team Go Rocket will appear more frequently frequently at Pokestops and in Balloons, and then you can use a Charge TM to help a Shadow Pokemon forget the Charge Attack frustration. So this is like the best thing about these Shadow events, because Shadow Pokemon hit a lot harder in raids and gyms and whatnot, um, and in competitive, and being able to get rid of frustration is obviously something that's very, very beneficial. So that's why people really, really enjoy these events. Uh, so obviously, sh uh, Save Shadow Heatran, so part of the seasonal special research story will be unlocked at the beginning of this event. Progress through it to receive a Super Rocket Radar and chase down Giovanni. Can claim the special uh, special research until the end of Pokemon Go max out on December the 3rd, 2024 at 9.59am local time. And obviously you can get Shadow Heatran from it. So Shadow Pokemon, so the Team Go Rocket grunts and their leaders, Sierra, Cliff and Arlo, are using different Shadow Pokemon. So Shadow Caterpie, Mankey, Rock and Roller, Venipede, Carablast and Shelmet. And then also, Pokemon received from Go Rocket Grunts may also be shiny if you're lucky. And then in Shadow Raids, you can get Shadow Machop, Shadow Grimer, Shadow Execute, and Shadow Sudowoodo. And in the three star Rage, Shadow Pinsir, Shadow Sableye, and Shadow Morwell. Field Research Task Rewards for Mysterious Components, Charge DMs, and Fast TMs. Pokestop showcases, web store stuff, event bundles, all that jazz. So that's the new Pokemon Go Team Rocket uh, uh, Expedition event as well. Finishing things off for today's video, I wanted to go over this sort of rumor here. So this, I, I haven't gone over, um, at least I don't believe I've gone over it. And it was posted a very, very long time ago. I've had it saved on my desktop for a very long time. And I was always meaning to go over it. It was posted on the 20th of July, so quite a while ago. But obviously it's not been kind of confirmed real or fake or anything like that. It's all about... Um, generation 10. I don't think there's any Legends EA stuff in this, but either way, I'm finally getting around to it. And I like going over Generation 10 stuff as well, because I think I'm more excited for Gen 10 than Legends EA, just because Generation 10, it's going to be on the Switch 2. Like, it's going to be the first, I'd expect, fully fledged game for the Switch 2. And I think it's just going to break all, like, sales and stuff for Pokemon Go. I think it's going to do so, so well. Uh, but either way, like I say, take it with a grain of salt anyway. It was posted on 4chan a while ago. Still hasn't been confirmed real or fake yet because we haven't had anything to do with Generation 10. But either way, it says, New leaks for the future of the franchise. So the source was from an investor meeting. So Generation 10 is going to be the last new generation for some while. The plan is for the next five generations to remake the entire rest of the series, up to a modern standard with two remakes per generation. So that would be like Generation 1 and 2 being remade, and then Generation 3 4 being remade per generation. So working through in order, Generation 11 will be Kanto and Johto, Generation 12 will be Hoenn and Sinnoh, Generation 13 will be Unova and Kalos, Generation 14 will be Alola and Galar, and then Generation 15 will be Paldea, and the as yet unnamed Generation 10 region. So I don't know if that means that they're going to be making like... I think that still means they'd make a Generation 11 game, but then they'd also make remakes for that as well. And maybe that's where Pokemon Works comes in. You know, Pokemon Works is a new kind of, um, I guess, subsidiary of Game Freak and Ilka. 
and they, I believe, are just going to be working on remakes and stuff like that. Just like they did with BDSP, I think they're just going to stick to the remakes and stuff. It'll allow Game Freak to work on the bigger games, like the new generation games, obviously Legends games, stuff like that. Um, and I think, yeah, outsourcing these remakes that, let's let's face it, Game Freak don't need to work on because all it is is just remaking the game, is polishing you. Like, you don't have to think of the story, it's already there. So... To be able to outsource that to something like Pokemon Works, I think is very beneficial and it would allow more Pokemon games to come out, but obviously it wouldn't affect the sort of, uh, I guess, the development of the normal Pokemon games because they wouldn't be working on them. They, you know, they're, they're going to stick to what the big games are and then they can out like they can outsource these kind of remakes so it doesn't affect, like I say, any of the, the kind of main, main stuff. So, remakes will not be compatible with pre-existing games, cannot transfer mods from games before Generation 11. So, I think around Generation 10, 11 will be a new sort of Pokemon Home system anyway. So, that probably... You'd like to think that would be able to transfer with Pokemon Home, because then, like, how are you able to get all the Pokemon across? But uh, Most are going to be fairly faithful remakes, albeit with altered maps and perspectives in line with the fully 3D games, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Exception was Unova. Game Freak considered it a bit of a blot on their uh, copybook and intend to completely redo the region using existing characters and mons, but with a much more traditional, uh, a much more traditional story. So yeah, I mean, Generation Five is kind of the first hiccup in, like, I guess, creating remakes because obviously you've got Black and White and you've got Black and White Two. It wasn't like a third installment. It wasn't like a Ruby and Sapphire Emerald situation. It wasn't a Gold Silver Crystal. These games kind of carried on the story. And I feel like you kind of have to remake all of it. Because you can't just have Black and White on its own. Like, you have to have Black and White 2 as well. So, like, how do you tackle that? Do you just make a Black and White 3 and you continue the story? I think that's the best way to possibly do it. Um, because it's going to be a brand new game. But it's still going to be set in Unova. And it's going to have all the characters and stuff. Like, just set it, like, five years in the future from Black and White 2 or something like that. I understand why people want remakes and stuff and remasters of them of those games and maybe we get them like maybe like the best kind of situation would be them to remake black and white one and two and then game free works on black and white three and then they release it all in like one year that would be just insane it's not going to happen but i would absolutely love to see that depending on performance of pokemon legend z8 they may introduce megas as a standard feature in all games going forward if it does poorly they're going with dynamax instead I mean, Mega Evolutions are definitely uh, more kind of sought after than Dynamax, 100%, because it gives... I know that Gigantamax gives new forms and stuff, but I think Mega Evolutions just has that extra bit of spice. And as well as that, I honestly think it's going to be a situation where Generation 10 will have its gimmick, but then it will also have Mega Evolution in the game. A little bit like Sun and Moon did it. So Sun and Moon had Z moves, but then they also had Mega Evolutions too. Because the way I think about it is if, if you're bringing like 15 new Mega Evolutions into Pokemon Legends ZA, and then they're just going to be stuck there, like not being able to be used in competitive for, for God knows how long. Like when will Mega Evolutions return to an actual main series game that does have online? After Legends EA, who knows? So I think they can literally have Mega Evolution and then... It mean the gimmick for Generation 10 would have to be like, I guess not crazy broken because then you'd be able to Mega Evolve and then do this gimmick in the same battle online, which I guess wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It'd be pretty cool. But at the same time, I just feel like, like you have to have these... Pokemon, these new Mega Evolutions used in a competitive format at some point because they are competitive Pokemon. Like that is the whole point of Mega Evolution. It's a competitive aspect. It's not. I mean, obviously, it's added to like the story as well, but the the main point of it is Mega Pokemon exist for battling, and to not have them in a competitive battling sense is just dumb in my opinion. So Gen 10 is going to be based on South America. One reason for this is the desire to tie up loose ends in a current canon, which includes removing any ambig uh, ambiguity of a Pokemon not just being the real world, not many details beyond this. And then it goes on to say, Dex Cut will be removed for the Generation 8 and Generation 9 remakes to compensate for no new Pokemon being made during this period. Um, I mean, like, Generation 8 and 9 would be so far away. That would be Generation, like... 14, 15, which will be in so many years. Like, how would they already know that information? Like, I don't think the timeline would be this far in advance. And then the law, manda uh, the law mandates are being pushed heavily. Desire expressed to erase mistakes in Pokemon's formative years. More family-friendly and simple stories going forward. Elements from the old games being revised to comply with this. Example, Lavender Town is now a place to commemorate lost Pokemon. I guess, obviously, that's what they did with the, the game corner and stuff. Like, they had to get rid of that because of, like, laws and stuff. And then Top Brass and Nintendo resistant to incorporating AI, which they have actually, like Nintendo have actually just come out and said that. And this was posted on the, the 7th of July. 
uh, or the 20th of July. They, they like Nintendo have literally come out saying they don't think they they don't agree with it. Like they don't think they're going to want to use it and stuff. Uh, Game Freak trying to protest this as they feel it would allow for better workflow. I mean, at the end of the day, AI will make life a lot easier for game management and, and game creation and stuff like that. But Nintendo, as I've said, they have just come out and said that they're not really that interested in it. And this is exactly what this person has said. And this came out in July. But again, you could have just guessed that. But either way, I, I don't think it's real. I don't know how he would know this much information about it. I also don't know if like, like, obviously every generation is, we usually get them every three years. And if there's going to be two remakes per generation that that would be like one we one remake one year one remake the next year and then obviously the new generation so what what does that mean for legends games what does that mean for for other kind of mainline games that does that mean that pokemon are only ever going to work on a new generation i don't think so so I, I don't believe it really but either way let me know your thoughts on this rumor would you like it to be true would you like all the games to be remade in a in a row uh, every single region, two generations being remade. It's kind of a lot of work, but I don't know, maybe that's, that's why they made Pokemon Works and stuff. But let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts on the Pokemon Go Rocket stuff. And then also, do you think that this is a hint towards all Mega Evolutions returning in Pokemon Legends ZA? But yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're brand new, ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and until next time, peace.